Morning, folks. Um, I've decided I'm probably going to break this alignment video up into several different segments because alignment is a complex topic. And uh, let me tell you, I'm no expert, but thanks to the generosity of people on forums and websites around the world, I have learned quite a bit. And I'd like to share that with you. And I don't want to gloss over any of the little things that might cause problems. I know when I got started on this, the manuals for most of the stereo equipment I work on, most of the tuners, um, seem to um, assume that you know more than you might, uh, such as how to connect the generator to the tuner. Now, most of these generators are 50 ohm output, and most of the tuner inputs are either 75 or 300 ohm. So we need to be able to connect those up without excessive loss so that the attenuator on the generator, generator is at least somewhat accurate. And somewhat is close enough because for most things uh, when aligning tuners, absolute level is not critical. The only times it is is when you're trying to uh, align the signal strength meter. But um, anyway, let me get, show you some of the paperwork for the alignment and some of the things we need to figure out before we get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is take a look at the instructions for aligning or adjusting the tuner and make sure you understand everything. So it's a good idea if they have a list of equipment, which this particular one didn't, to see what they call for. And also, you're going to want to go through and read through before you make any adjustments to make sure you understand everything. So they tell you to connect the FM signal generator to the 300 ohm terminal through your 300 ohm dummy antenna. And we'll get to that when we go to hook it up and I'll explain more about what they want. You want to set the TX930, which is this tuner, to the FM band and manual tuning mode. Set the FM muting switch to the off position. Turn the FM signal generator tune the, sorry the fm signal generator to the tx930 that's any instruction that has a asterisk one which you first see here okay that's down here and then we have asterisk two connect the fm multiplex stereo signal generator to the fm signal generator external modulator input which is coincidentally how mine works so we'll go through that as well. And asterisk three, connect the FM multiplex stereo signal generator to the FM signal generator external modulator terminal. We already did that. Set the modulation to main one kilohertz, left plus right, plus or minus 67.5 kilohertz deviation, pilot 19 kilohertz slash plus or minus 7.5 kilohertz deviation. And we will go through that on what I use to externally modulate my generator. All right, now the other things you're gonna to wanna to know is your adjustment points and what you're adjusting for. This has a pretty good diagram here that shows all our adjustment points and all our test points. So that's one of the reasons I decided to show alignment on this particular tuner is it's pretty straightforward. And being a Varactor tuned tuner, it's a little simpler than the older ones. And we'll talk about that briefly as well. Now, one of the other things we're gonna wanna look at is they're talking about a signal level of 20 db and it drives me nuts when when manufacturers do this because db is a ratio and you need to know what zero db is is it zero db milliwatts millivolts microvolts is it usually when no um unit is given they're referring to sound pressure levels, but we know they're not here because this is for a signal generator. They are looking for dB microvolts. So in order to figure out what our levels are, we need to print out a chart like this, a conversion table. And that shows us that 20 dB is 10 microvolts. Later on, they're asking us for 60 dB, which is one millivolt. So they are looking for a fairly weak level here at 20 and a fairly high level here at one millivolt. So 
you need to know what they actually want so you can set your generator accordingly. Now, as I said, absolute level is not critical, but we want to at least be in the ballpark. All right, so if we look at this, we see that the first two steps require no signal from the signal generator and that we set our frequencies at either 87.5 megahertz or 108 megahertz. Now, before I even go through the rest of this instruction, I want to show you what I did because tuners like this are a lot quicker to work this way. And I also want to point out while we're here that our FM and AM indicators now work. Now we fix the power supply. So they want 87.5 megahertz and 108. Since this unit has presets, I simply set one for 87.5 and the other one for 108. And what this allows us to do is toggle back and forth because as the instructions say here, repeat steps one and two until both specifications are correct. So what they want us to do is we are setting the entire range of tuning. This um, is actually the extent of the tuning scale. And since it's for actor tune, we're gonna measure for DC voltages between these two test points at each end of the frequency range or spectrum on an FM tuner. So we're gonna start at 87.5 megahertz and we're gonna adjust L3 for 6.5 volts between these two points and 108 megahertz, we're gonna adjust TC3 for 20 volts between these points. What that's going to do is set our, our varactors. Now, I'm just gonna briefly show you the schematic for the front end. These are varactor diodes, all the ones I've circled here in red. These are FM, these are AM. And what we do is we change the voltage across the diode, which changes its capacitance and allows the tuner to tune. So instead of having the variable vein um, air core tuners that we use for older or uh, vintage FM tuners. This one is electronically or varactor tuned and that's how it works. We apply different voltages to these diodes. They provide different capacitances and these tank circuits will then resonate at a different frequency. That's how these things tune. So we are connected already to our test points number three and four, which are here and here and we are going to adjust at 87.5 where we are currently tuned until we get 6.5 volts we need to tune l3 and tc3 they are found right here so Tuning L3 for 6.5. There we go, so that's 6.5. And then we need to tune to 108 volts, 108 megahertz, <laughs> and look for 20 volts. And that's pretty close. Now, usually capacitive adjustments are a lot touchier than inductors. So let's see if this is the same way. Oh, yes it is. Okay, so we need a lighter touch. I haven't been out of bed long, I just sucked down a big cup of coffee, so this is not the best time for this type of work. But let's see how close we can get this. All right. And that's good, so let's go back 6.49, not terrible. Okay, 6.5. Okay, let's see if we can get this any closer. Oh, brother. Okay. We're not gonna play with this too much more. Let's try and split the difference there. Let's 
Sounds good in theory. Okay. That's as close as we're going to try to get that. Okay. Now the next adjustments they want necessitate using the signal generator. So we are now on steps four and five and we're going to go set between 90 megahertz and 106 megahertz. Now this necessitates connecting the signal generator and it also necessitates that we have no radio stations near here. So we're going to have to listen and make sure we don't. And if we do, we'll have to adjust these slightly until we find some dead air because it's key that we do that. So we'll come back to that because this necessitates connecting the generator and I want to spend a little time talking about that and I need to get ready for work. Okay, folks, back home from another day of mind-numbing, soul-destroying work. Anyhow, I want to talk about um, alignment generators, or, or generators used in the alignment of um, AM-FM tuners. Um, there's a lot of folks out there that tend to gravitate toward the ones that were used in the shops back in the day, back in the 70s. If you owned a service facility, chances are you either had a Sencor SG-165 or Sound Technology 1000A. Now the Sencor unit did AM, FM, and FM stereo. Um, the Sound Technology only did FM and FM stereo. But they were the units called out in most of the service literature. But the point I always like to make is you do not need vintage test equipment to service or align vintage audio equipment. Um, today, there are a lot more choices available that, in my opinion, make a lot more sense, which is why I wound up with an HP 8657A. Uh, I bought four of these from a liquidator and I sold several of them to help recoup my investment. And as I was watching YouTube, one of my favorite YouTube channels, and I highly recommend you check them out, is X-Ray Tony B. If you are into servicing or uh, trying to align vintage audio equipment, I think he's probably one of the best ones on YouTube, so I highly recommend you check him out, X-Ray Tony B. And I was gratified to see that he had the same unit I have. Now, one issue with the HP 8657A is it will not do FM stereo without being externally modulated. He actually uses a Sencor SG-165 to externally modulate his HP um, because this way he gets the accuracy and the repeatability and the stability of a synthesized generator and he can just do the external modulation with the Sencor. Um, you could do the same thing with the Sound Technology 1000A. I chose to get the uh, HP or Agilent 8904A. You have to be careful to get one that falls into a certain serial number range and has option one. And um, I will put a note about that on this video in the description so you can, uh, if you decide to go that direction, you can look at that. All right, so now the next thing I want to show you is how we connect the generator to the tuner. Okay, so when you buy a uh, generator like this, it comes with an output either on the front or occasionally in the back, depending on which model you get, with a connector like this, which is called Type N, as in November. And usually we want to adapt that to a BNC. So I get a little guy that looks like this. All right, this is Type N here to BNC here. And that just screws right on like this. And that allows us to come out of the type N connector and into uh, what I use is I made a, uh, a simple filter in a box. It looks like this. It has 50 ohms in here. Focus, all right. And then 75 ohms out here. Inside is just a piece of wire and a small trimmer capacitor that goes to ground. Um, 
I found this on a page put up by a very smart guy named Brian Beasley and I will uh, also post the link to his website. He has a whole page on how to adapt 50 ohm generators to 75 ohms for aligning tuners. So I chose this because this is supposed to be a very low loss solution. You can also get what they call a minimum loss pad. So if you look at this guy and it actually focuses, which it doesn't seem to want to do here. Let me try this again. Okay, this is a minimum loss pad and the insertion loss is 5.6 dB. So, if I were to use this, I would have to calculate that. However, with this generator, I could actually program in an offset. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn this thing on now, and then we're going to connect it up. So we're going to take a BNC to BNC cable and come out of our generator and go into our box on the 50 ohm side. And then we're going to come out with a cable that looks like this, BNC to what they call type F for coax. Now we need to take a look at the back of the tuner. So we look at this, we'll see that simply we have 300 ohm or unterminated 75. So now we need to go from 75 ohm to 300. And if that sounds familiar, that's because we used to use these guys all the time when we had cable TV and our TV still had the old um, screw terminals for the antenna. So this will adapt 75 ohm to 300. It's a matching transformer, also known as a ballon. Okay, so we are going to connect that to our antenna terminals. like this okay so now we have our ballon connected and we're going to connect our BNC to type F connector so now we have our box here 75 ohm here, 50 out here to the generator. Okay, so that is how we connect to our tuner. I'm going to turn everything on here. It's probably going to get a little noisy. Er. So where we left off this morning was right here. We want to go between 90 megahertz and 106 megahertz at 20 dB, which if you recall is going to be 10 microvolts. We want to have our tuner set to 90.3 or 106 megahertz. These are our adjustment points. We were going to adjust until we get a DC voltage between terminal 9 and ground and its maximum. Now I'm going to talk a little about that when we get there, but also notice that we have asterisk 1 here. And if we go back up to the top of our instructions, that tells us to tune the FM signal generator to the TX930. So basically we want 90 megahertz from our signal generator and 90 megahertz from the TX930. Now, I mentioned this morning that we want to make sure that we have no signals at those two points. And we do have one near 90 that's going to cause a little bit of interference. So, we can tune to 90.3. So, I'm going to tune our frequency to 90.3 megahertz. Our amplitude is going to be 10 microvolts 
Now, if we look at our scope, we won't see anything at all because we have no FM modulation. It appears they don't want any FM modulation. They only want 90 and 106 megahertz. So we are going to have our carrier only. So let's take a look at our unit here and see what we have. I have my flute connected up to our test points. And we have plenty of glare. Okay, you should be able to see that fairly clearly. And it's not dancing around too badly. So they want us to adjust L1 and L2 for maximum. Now, a digital meter can be used for this, but this is the kind of task where the old school analog meter is actually a better choice. Now, I wish I had a DC vacuum tube voltmeter. I do have a VTVM, but it's AC only and we need a DC meter. So I'm gonna use a Simpson. And I hesitate to do so because Simpson has a pretty low input resistance or impedance. Uh, Simpsons are rated at 20,000 ohms per volt. And that means on the 2.5 volt range, which is the lowest range, you're looking at an input resistance of around 50K. And that's not great. Uh, the input impedance of a fluke digital meter like this one is 10 mega ohm. And this is important because remember when I talked about test equipment, is that when you connect your test equipment to any unit under test, it becomes part of that unit under test as soon as you connect it. But I believe we can get by with using the Simpson now for at least demonstration purposes because I want to show you why I feel an analog meter is actually better. Remember, we're looking for a max value and watching a needle is very good for that. And especially seeing how this last digit wanders a bit, the ballistics of an analog meter movement will just swamp that out. You really won't see it. So I'm gonna move over to this guy. You've seen these. Every bench should have an analog meter. I have found bad transistors with this. I never would have found with any other type of tester. Okay, so you see we have roughly half scale here. So if I can find the alignment tool, and we are looking for L1 and L2. Okay. So L1 is here. L2 is right below it. So L1. Now you see how much easier it is to see when we have a peak with an analog meter? We could have done it with the digital, but this is one place where I feel that an analog meter just gives you an easier indication. Okay, I knocked the uh, ground off. Let me get back here. much easier to find the peak with an analog. Okay, so we're going between 90 megahertz and 106. What this does is set up what's known as your dial tracking. Uh, on an old school tuner, it would make sure that everything falls right. And it's very important. Okay, so now we go up to 106 megahertz. And we need to put our meter, I'm sorry, our generator to 106 megahertz. So let's take a look there. Frequency 106 megahertz. All right. Before I do anything else, I want to show you one of the reasons I like generators like this. We are going to have to go back and forth between those two points, between actually 90.3 because there was a station at 90 and 106. So what we can do is we can put in 
frequency increment set 15.7 megahertz. Now the increment and decrement keys will simply allow us to toggle between the two values just that quick. Makes life so much easier. Okay, so we are doing 106 megahertz now and we have to set our our peak and that is going to require us to adjust TC1 and TC2 which are these capacitors here and here and by the way I use ceramic alignment tools you cannot use metallic tools when making these adjustments they will throw everything off so use either plastic wood or ceramic so now this is probably going to be just as touchy as any other capacitive adjustment, but we want to go for our peak. This, this is pretty close. And in here. Oh, that was quite a bit off. So we got a little more out of there. Okay. And now we set our tuner back to 90.3 and our generator back by using the decrement key. Remember how easy that is? We go back 90.3, 90.3. So let's check and make sure we're still peaked. So we wanna see here. Got a little bit more here. Uh, we got a little more. And this is why you have to go back and forth between them several times. And that's where this generator and using the presets on the tuner are real time savers. 106, 106. Check the high end. But you can see how much easier an analog meter movement is to peak. It's all about the best tool for the job. When you want an absolute value, the digital meter is the way to go. It's easy to read, they're much more accurate, but if you're just going for a peak or a null, an analog movement is really hard to beat. Okay, back up to 106 again. I think we're about there. We're not going to get much better than this. Okay, I think we're good. So we've gone back and forth a few times and we've got our dial tracking set pretty well. All right, so let's see what the next step is. Okay, so what they want us to do in the next step is they want us to go to 98 megahertz. And again, we're gonna have to see if we have any radio stations there. So I have one of the outputs connected to my oscilloscope and the other one to a test stereo. So let's see what we find here at 98. Well, there's a lot of congestion right around 98. 
Okay, we're gonna go with 97.6 megahertz. That's as close as we can get that has a station that's dead. So, we're gonna put our generator at 97.6 megahertz. Okay, that's good. We have good quieting. We have no FM modulation, so you're not going to hear anything, but we do have good quieting. All right, so now they want 20 dB. Okay, and we're on 20 dB. That's 10 microvolts, and we want to adjust T1 for maximum voltage at the same test points. So let's see what we have at T1. I think that's probably going to want a different tool. And T1. Is right here. So that's going to be down here. And we want to peak this. Okay. All right, it's fairly well peaked already. Okay, so I think we're good there. And what else do they want? Okay, they want us to set... ...60 dB, which is one millivolt. And we want zero volts between terminal six and terminal seven. Okay, terminal 6 and terminal 7 are here and here. Okay. That looks like zero. Let's see what the digital meter says here. Okay. We're pretty close to zero. Our amplitude is one millivolt. Oops, sorry. That's one millivolt. And we are going to This is our discriminator adjustment. We need zero volts. Like everything else, it seems to be really touchy. If I go to the millivolt range, I have to say that's zero. Certainly close enough. Back in the day, before digital meters, we would have done, been done with this already because you wouldn't be able to measure down this low on a meter like the, the analog below this. I'm going to get back down to a few millivolts and call it good. Okay, we're going to call that good.
All right, the other thing we're gonna to wanna to look at is distortion, which means we're gonna need some modulation on here. So, we're gonna put our FM on, FM 75 kilohertz. And there you hear it. Okay. So we're gonna use our Keithley. and take a look at the distortion. Okay. Shift THD. And we have 0.1% distortion. Now, I don't think it's gonna get any better. So for that, we have to dial the other side of that block. And it's just gonna get worse if I do that. Okay, 0.14. This is about as low as this is gonna get. Okay, that's very good. All right, so we want zero volts and low distortion. So we have a little bit higher level here. So we need to, again, go back and forth. Okay, seven millivolts is close enough to zero. And our distortion is still 0 0.14, 0 0.15. So I'm gonna stop the video here and I'm gonna publish this and then we're gonna come back and do the FM stereo, which is gonna necessitate externally modulating our generator. I just don't want these to run on too long. All right, so anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something, and as always, I enjoy giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you again soon.